This is a demonstration video of the Shadok Arm and Hand Activity Inventory, also known as the Kehi 13. Today you will see Megumi Arai and Randell Gunderson, occupational therapy students from Toro University, Nevada, demonstrate the administration of the Kehi 13. The purpose of this assessment is to evaluate the functional ability of the hemiplegic arm and hand to perform tasks that have been identified as important by stroke survivors. Bilateral function of both the affected and unaffected upper extremities are necessary. Before we get started, the equipment needed for this assessment is an adjustable height table, stationary chair or wheelchair without armrests, four standard size steps with rail, a 200 gram jar of instant coffee, push button telephone with the buttons on the base, 12 inch ruler, 8.5 by 11 inch paper, pencil, 2.3 liter plastic pitcher with lid, 250 milliliter plastic cup, washcloth, wash basin, bath towel, toothpaste with screw lid, toothbrush, heavy plastic dinner plate that is 25 centimeters in diameter, knife and fork, eyeglasses, handkerchief, 38 liter container holding 10 pounds, plastic grocery bag holding 4 pounds, medium resistance putty, which is demonstrated with food in this video. Also required are two custom ponchos. Each of these ponchos can be sewn following patterns provided by the creators of the Kehi 13. However, for demonstration purposes, these items will be replaced with a dress shirt and zipper vest in this video. Finally, adaptive equipment is suggested to have on hand in case it is needed. These items include a Dyson, and built up handles the length of the utensil handle. The therapist should collect the items necessary to perform the assessment prior to beginning. This assessment lasts approximately 30 minutes. The standard starting position requires the client to be seated in the chair or wheelchair without armrests. Correct posture is encouraged with feet placed flat on the floor. The height of the table should be at the last costal rib of the client, and the client's elbow should rest proximal to the table edge with the hands resting on the table. If variations are required, this should be documented at the top of the task page. As the assessment begins, the client is reminded that some tasks will be difficult, and they should not be frustrated if they are unable to complete all tasks they should be encouraged to use bilateral hands and arms. Finally, they should be reminded that they can attempt each task twice. As a therapist, remember safety is a top priority. During each assessment item, the task should be demonstrated once, twice if needed. The client may be cued to use both hands twice. The client may be reminded not to rest the elbows on the table twice. The therapist should use the task component chart to determine what part of the task the weak limb is completing, and the seven point activity scale is used to determine the score. This scale is modeled after the functional independence measure scale. The therapist should be familiar and comfortable with the scale with seven denoting complete independence and one denoting total assistance. Item one is opening the jar of coffee. The therapist instructs the client to open the jar using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The jar should be placed at an extended arm distance and lifted above the table while one hand stabilizes and the other unscrews the lid it is unacceptable for the client to place the jar between his legs. Item two is calling 911. The therapist instructs the client to call 911 using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The phone should be placed at an extended arm distance from the client. 
one hand should reach for the receiver and bring it to their ear, while the other hand dials the number on the base. Item 3 is drawing a line with a ruler. The therapist instructs the client to draw a straight line the length of the ruler using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The pencil and ruler are set atop the edge of paper with the paper placed horizontally at the edge of the table. One hand reaches for and horizontally places the ruler on the paper and continues to stabilize it in that position, while the other hand reaches for the pencil and uses it to trace along the ruler on the paper. It is unacceptable for the four arms to rest on the table. Item four is pouring a glass of water. The therapist instructs the client to pour a full glass of water using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The empty cup is placed next to the full pitcher at an extended arm distance from the client. One hand should reach for and grasp the cup, lifting it atop the table, while the other hand grasps the pitcher lifts it off the table and pours water into the cup. Item five is wringing out a washcloth. The therapist instructs the client to wring out the washcloth using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The washcloth is placed in a basin half full of water at the table's edge. One hand should reach and grasp the washcloth moving in a ringing fashion, while the other hand holds the washcloth in place and permits the ringing action. It is unacceptable for the client to squeeze the washcloth. Rather, a ringing action is required. Item six is buttoning five buttons. The therapist instructs the client to do up five buttons using both of your hands. Start at the top. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The client sits back from the table to permit buttoning. One hand reaches and grasps the material of the shirt, brings the sides together, assists in guiding the button, and releases the material, while the other hand reaches and grasps buttons, brings the sides of the material together, and threads the button through the holes. Item seven is drying the back with a towel. The therapist instructs the client to dry your entire back with a towel using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The towel is placed on the table at an extended arm distance. One hand reaches and grasps the towel and positions the towel over the back while the other hand grasps the opposite end of the towel and rubs the towel along the entirety of the back. Item eight is putting toothpaste on a toothbrush. The therapist instructs the client to put the toothpaste on the toothbrush using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The toothbrush and toothpaste are positioned horizontally on the table at an extended arm distance. Note, once the toothpaste tube is depleted to 50% full, it should not be used for assessing. One hand should reach and grasp the toothpaste, then squeeze the tube with enough force to get the toothpaste on the brush. The other hand unscrews the lid and reaches for and grasps the toothbrush. Item nine is cutting medium resistance putty. The therapist instructs the client to cut five small separate pieces using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The putty is placed at an extended arm's length with a fork and knife on either side of the plate. One hand should reach and grasp the knife, position it in the putty, and use a cutting motion. The other hand reaches and grasps the fork, places the fork in the putty, and uses the fork to move cut pieces to the side. 
it is unacceptable to cut large pieces. Item 10 is zipping up a zipper. The therapist instructs the client to zip up the zipper using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The therapist places the poncho on the client. One hand reaches for and grasps the zipper, placing the ends of the zipper together. The other hand reaches for and grasps the other end of the zipper, placing the ends of the zipper together, grasps the zipper pull and pulls the zipper up. Item 11 is cleaning a pair of eyeglasses. The therapist instructs the client to clean the glasses with a handkerchief using both of your hands. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. Both lenses are wetted and the glasses are placed bridge down in an extended arm distance. The handkerchief is placed beside the glasses. One hand reaches for and grasps the glasses, then manipulates the glasses in order to be able to clean all areas of the glasses. The other hand reaches for the handkerchief and uses it to rub the glasses. Item 12 is placing a container on a table. The therapist instructs the client to place the container on the table. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The client stands with the strong side facing the table. The container is filled with 10 pounds of weight and placed on the floor in front of the client. One hand reaches down and grasps the container using elbow flexion to lift the container enough to easily clear the table while placing the container on the table. The other hand maintains sufficient grasp and stabilizes the container during lifting without using the body for support. It is unacceptable to twist the trunk while feet remain planted on the floor or use trunk extension to lift the container. Item 13 is carrying a bag upstairs. The therapist instructs the client to carry the bag up four steps using your affected arm. The therapist demonstrates the task for the client. The client stands or sits in front of the stairs with the bag placed on the floor in front of the client. It is required that the client use the weak limb to carry the bag. One arm grasps the bag through both handles and maintains hold with hand or crook of arm. The unaffected arm remains free to steady the client on the rail. Once each of the items are scored, their cumulative amount is totaled for a maximum possible score of 91. And that's it. No standardized interpretation of scoring currently exists. So you're done. If the therapist is tracking a client's progress, a change of 6.3 points is required to denote a significant change.